let's dive into the prototype pollution uh, bug. Um, here I have some code on the left side. Um, this is how we would uh, do some objects in, in JavaScript. So let's, uh, let's make two, A and B. So A has the property test, uh, which equals to 10. And B has a property hello, which equals to the string world. And now if we print things, what you would expect, uh, you would expect that A has the property test, but doesn't have property hello, which we defined for, um, for our object B. And also we would expect that B, when we asked, <clears throat> and when we look up the property hello in B, uh, it should print the string world, but uh, the test should be undefined, right? And this, this view um, of the code is kind of reflected here on the right with these two boxes uh, where there are kind of two independent boxes and A has its own property uh, and B has its own uh, property. And when we try to look up the property that isn't there, uh, it comes back undefined. Uh, okay, so uh, here we basically have the same code. Uh, we print the same things but we are changing something here in the middle. We do some magic in JavaScript. So what we do is we go to A, the property proto, and whatever comes back, uh, whatever object comes back, we change, we add a new property test to it and set it to 20. And we do something similar to B, but here we go with constructor, prototype, and set the property hello to polluted. And what happens here now is that A test is, uh, comes back 10. And the property hello of A is also defined now, and it's uh, it's polluted. And the same uh, is in B. Uh, this is the property we defined up here. So it is uh, hello, and it should be world, and it is. But uh, now we can also access the property test. Um, and if you look here, we never assigned uh, test to B. We only assigned hello. So somehow this um, this view that we had from the previous slide is kind of not the same. So there are these two objects are not uh, not quite separate, not in JavaScript at least. So let's uh, let's see what's what's actually happening here. And what's happening is this: that when we try to access the property proto in A, uh, it gives us back the prototype of object A. And um, this property, this property, um, sorry, the prototype object of A is the same that uh, the prototype object of B. And when we add properties there they also become visible in B. And the way uh, properties get, look, get look, looked up in JavaScript is when we want to have a property, we first look it up in the object we are asked uh, to look it up. And then uh, if it's not there, we move up the prototype chain and check if the property uh, exists in, in its prototype. Uh, and if it doesn't exist here, exist here, and then we go up to the prototypes prototype and so on. So we basically go all the way up to the prototype chain and uh, Look, look up for that property. And um, the final prototype of all objects is null. Um, and this object prototype is actually quite quite common um, prototype of most of JavaScript objects. Um, yeah, and um, there's another way to reach that prototype and it is by going over constructor. So B of constructor, then we get to this function object whose prototype also points to the same object. So physically the same object in memory. And when we add properties there, they become visible in A and in B, right? Um, okay, so what's what's the problem with this? What, what happened? So first we saw that they are not quite independent and that gets overlooked because it's not really visible from the code. So if, if I go back to the previous slide, um, to this snippet, uh, when we define objects like this, um, they really look like they're two independent objects and have nothing to do with each other, but that, that's not the case. And the big deal is actually uh, that prototype pollution allows all sorts of vulnerabilities. Uh, for example, we can, we can now have authentication bypass depending on how things are implemented uh, uh, in the target application or a privilege escalation. Um, there were CVEs where prototype pollution resulted in uh, cross-site scripting, uh, remote codes execution. And if none of this works, you can still pollute um, the prototype and add uh, and change basically this two string function, set it to something else other than the function. You can say it's now number zero. And when someone tries to print something using two string, it's, uh, it's gonna come back with an error. So that might actually crash the application. And uh, according to our research, this is the third most frequent vulnerability in JavaScript. Um, yeah, so it's actually quite a big deal. Uh, and it's really easy to introduce this. 
because uh, the, in the code itself, it's not really apparent that uh, um, these objects are connected. And actually, most of JavaScript's object, objects are connected. 